along. Uh, we're doing well. And you said uh, unprecedented times. I, I shifted from that about three months ago to unfathomable times. Wow. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, we are here. We are present, uh, head up and chest out and ready to go, man. Very excited about what the future holds for us. Gene, share with us an overview of what this six month period has been like for you as you've assisted Ray and keeping Sun Devil Athletics together during this pandemic. Somebody told me you've been a part of something like a thousand Zoom calls over the last few months. <laughs> well, no one's counting anymore. Uh, I think we all, had, we all had a little bit of a registry at some point, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's been challenging uh, and at the same time rewarding. Uh, Ray was very clear when it all started that uh, we needed to survive to thrive is kind of the language that he used. And everybody understood that, you know, there's going to be challenging moments. There'll be uh, a lot of unknowns, um, a lot of unpredictable twists and turns. But if we can stay the course and, you know, stay true to our values as Sun Devil Athletics in general, that we will come out of this better, better prepared, uh, not only to do what is in the immediate future, but better prepared for the long haul, better prepared for the success and the, the all the achievements that we want to accomplish as a program. So. Uh, we stayed the course for sure, and uh, we're here today ready to move forward. What have been the primary challenges for you and uh, your senior staff, Gene, to uh, keep the department functioning uh, when life was brought to a standstill by the coronavirus? Yeah, I think the unpredictability, um, you know, you got a lot of people who really are focused on being scheduled to the moment, head coaches especially, you know, they're scripted and uh, they're scheduled and everything is in place and this has knocked us all off our feet in terms of being able to predict what's going to happen even the next day. I mean, there's been weeks where we went from going to play to maybe play, not going to play to postpone. I mean, all in a week's time period. Um, there's just such an unpredictable reality, not only with COVID-19 and what's going on, but then, you know, we've had what some have called dual pandemics where uh, many of the ugly histories of our country have reared their heads once again in terms of social justice or social injustice and how that emotionally impact uh, young people and, and, and people who are, uh, you know, full grown adults who um, are, are concerned and, and care deeply for the country that they live in. And so uh, it hasn't just been COVID, <laughs> you know, yeah. interlaced with COVID have been a lot of other variables that probably uh, accelerated and intensified by what people's emotions are around COVID and, you know, being in the house for long periods of time and all those kind of things uh, have, have, have changed or has have caused um, elevated uh, outbursts in a number of different ways. Um, and it's just so, it's been so unpredictable. That, that's been the most challenging thing is the fluid nature and unpredictability of day to day and how you, how you operate from, from one day to the next. Let's look at some of the issues that you and the staff have had to deal with and have dealt with successfully. First, let's talk about the financial impact of the pandemic and how you've been able to help Sun Devil Athletics and its top financial officer, Frank Ferreira, navigate through all these challenges with loss of revenue from spring and fall sports. And yet, despite that, ASU has not had to eliminate sports. You haven't had to lay off or furlough any of your athletic staff or even impose pay reductions uh, for your athletic staff. How have you been able to manage that? Yeah, Tim, I mean, I think first and foremost, we run a pretty tight ship as it is. So going into the unfortunate COVID time period, uh, we had been on track. We'd been um, you know, successful at budgeting the past several years in a way that probably hadn't happened before. So with that being on track, we took some quick steps to uh, make some budgetary reviews. You know, Frank had about 10 different scenarios, <laughs> uh, him and wow. Dan Wakely, uh, his assistant who has done a fantastic job of projections, but you know, a bunch of different scenarios. If this happens, then this might be the fallout. If that happens, here's the worst case, here's moderate, here's, here's ideal. <clears throat> and so with all those scenarios, we were able to identify, okay, if we took, you know, some modest budget cuts, uh, or, or I shouldn't say modest, but, you know, significant budget cuts in our overall budget proactively, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, we'd, we'd stave off some of the more uh, dramatic uh, possibilities that might be coming on down the line. I will say this as well, our university 
And the work that's been done over the past decade plus in terms of you know, the development of online uh, education, uh, online mechanisms uh, for class deliveries and those types of things uh, has really helped every area of the university, you know, senior uh, central administration down uh, because you know, our, our enrollment numbers are, you know, have not suffered at all. And in fact, they've been, for example, in the summertime, all time high for enrollment at Arizona wow. State University for summer school and so forth. And so um, we're well positioned as a university to weather this storm with the way we've evolved. And you know, th this whole tag about being number one for innovation in the United States five years in a row um, has come in you know, quite productively and powerfully and dynamically during this time period. So uh, I think we've been good partners with the university. Um, we've been willing to do whatever it takes uh, to, to stay whole. And that was something that Ray was very adamant about from the beginning as well. Yes, he was. Uh, this is kind of in that vein, Gene, but the pandemic, of course, hit in mid-March. At that time, your spring semester, your 2020 spring semester, still had about two months uh, remaining. And yet the department was able to deal with the pandemic from an academic standpoint. In fact, Sun Devil Athletics, as I understand it, Gene, posted one of its best ever grade point averages this past spring. Uh, in fact, and several other metrics were the best ever uh, in, in history as it relates to academic performance. And, you know, it speaks to adaptability and flexibility. I, I think that's something that uh, we pride ourselves on, on doing in any time as an athletic program. Uh, Andrea Lohr, in particular, who heads that unit. Courtney Skipper, who's one of the uh, associate directors down there and heads football academics uh, and a whole host of others in that area, you know, really uh, took an attitude of by any means necessary, we will provide the support needed for our student athletes to get where they need to go in terms of their academic pursuits. And so when we went all virtual, then we were having virtual tutoring, virtual academic mentoring, virtual study tables. Uh, the academic coordinators for each sport would check in with, with their student athletes via Zoom and other virtual mechanisms. Uh, the phone still works, right? So you can call someone up and have a conversation with them and so forth. So uh, th those areas, that area in particular under Andrea's leadership uh, was stellar um, and, and, and really helped our student athletes through. Uh, and, and our coaches, of course, uh, have sent strong messages that we can't, we can't just let go and, and, and relent and give up because we don't have games scheduled for the next few months. I mean, we, we, we actually should pour more time and energy in to this mm -hmm. particular area of your growth and development. And our student athletes responded accordingly. One of the biggest pieces of the puzzle, Gene, has been the medical aspect, providing the best health care for your student athletes and staff. And what have been the primary challenges there? And tell us about some of the talented healthcare professionals on your staff who've been on the front lines with your student athletes from day one. Absolutely, I mean, a complete collaborative effort um, our team physicians, led by Shannon Lancaster, who, who is our uh, is the head team physician for uh, the student athlete perspective, uh, they report up to uh, the EOS area um, and student health services. And so uh, Stephanie Schroeder, who oversees that, Aaron Kras now, who the area reports to, uh, not to mention the counseling services and mental health piece as well. Along with that, those individuals. Uh, all have partnered with us hand in hand from day one uh, and, and have asked us consistently, what do we need? Uh, how can we push through this time period? Uh, you know, the frontline professionals, which includes Shannon Lancaster, Roger McCoy, and the other team physicians, Kenny McCarty and his cast of athletic trainers, um, Joe Connolly in football, uh, Leanne Blinn and Rich Winter for all of our other sports in the sport performance area. I mean, Tim, if you think about it, I mean, these individuals have spent hundreds of hours on the front lines uh, with our mm -hmm. student athletes um, and have taken, you know, their own personal risks as it related to um, uh, COVID and, and, and other things relative to keeping the shop moving forward. And they've attacked this with a high level of intensity. Uh, it's not been perfect, uh, but we've been, again, flexible and nimble and able to adjust on the fly, um, you know, again, we were going to start training at a certain point in time and then there's a shift in that time period because uh, of an increase in cases or things like that and 
We've had to recalibrate and, and regenerate plans in all these different areas. Uh, but but that that crew of individuals, I have the utmost respect for uh, because you know they didn't flinch. They they were determined to provide excellent service for our student athletes. And you know the Pac-12 conference, we're fortunate in that our conference has a, 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 an excellent stellar cast of uh, experts, physicians, um, infectious disease experts, uh, et cetera, who have really set forward an entire operating system and principle for each of the Pac-12 schools to uh, frame how we were going to then uh, put those things into practice and play on our campuses to create that safe environment, uh, to have, you know, testing that could identify when someone had COVID, to uh, have, uh, of course, um, the most clean and disinfected areas and spaces to train and one one way entry and one way out. I mean, Mike Chismar and his his team uh, from an operation standpoint, and uh, Nicole Luoma and her staff, which is uh, in the you know central campus operations and facilities area. Uh, Tim, it's been an incredible team effort, man. We've never seen anything like it before, uh, really, in the history of Sun Devil Athletics. Not only internally, but also with some of those uh, other campus groups that you know had to be you know helping us as it related to getting you know PPE and facial coverings mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, antiseptic, antiseptic wipes and all those kind of things, man. It, it, just all the things that people are thinking about in their household that they need to be safe, multiply that times 600 young people and coaches and staff and just think about the sheer volume of materials needed to do that. Uh, it, it's been quite the production uh, and quite an incredible team effort. You mentioned the coaches and their staffs. How about the way they have had to deal with the pandemic uh, and its impact on sports seasons, ever-changing NCAA rules, scholarship changes, squad sizes, eligibility, scheduling issues, and all of that? Yeah, as you can imagine, the uh, frequency of the administration, senior administration in particular, and head coaches meeting together uh, intensified dramatically. Um, there are always uh, regular meetings with, you know, those those members of Sunday Athletics, but at uh, certain times during during uh, the epidemic uh, or the pandemic, we have, you know, met weekly, if not a couple times a week, depending on new information coming out, new direction and directives coming out. Uh, you know, the coaches, fortunately for us, I mean, we've got 21 plus CEOs, we've got 26 sports, but, you know, some of the head coaches Oversee a couple of different areas. Um, right. We've got 21 CEOs, right, who are thinking about their group of coaches, you know, their staff and their individual student athletes, and then thinking how to take this centralized information and to impart it with their student athletes in a similarly high caliber, uh, highly effective way. And so it's been, you know, pretty remarkable to partner with them. Um, you know, coaches there, even though they know that we're at a pause or we're not at full capacity, they they are, they keep an eye on the future and they keep an eye on getting ready to participate when the appropriate time is. And, you know, they have great questions. Um, you know, they sometimes see things in the system that might be lagging or could be improved and they communicate. So we've been operating as, you know, one large executive group of thinkers about how to negotiate all of these unforeseen, uh, rapidly changing uh, realities that we've been dealing with. So it, it's, it's been fantastic to work with them. I, I think that uh, we've been also able to tap into their knowledge a little bit more. Uh, believe it or not, we're in the middle of a strategic planning uh, project that will be un unveiled here shortly. And some people would say, why the heck would you do a strategic plan for your department for the next five years in the middle of COVID, but it required us to be so focused and really think about what the most important components uh, of Sun Devil Athletics are. And we got to pick the coach's brain a lot more than we ever could normally because there was, you know, more time that they're not traveling and practicing and, and even competing. And so we really got to get some great insights from them about how to elevate this program into, you know, a consistent top, top 10 program across the board in all of our sports. So I think we took great advantage of it uh, from, a, from a coaching perspective as well. 
because of the pandemic, your sports teams have been unable to play games since the early middle part of March. How has your staff, Gene, been able to keep your fan base, your donors, sponsors, ticket holders, all those constituencies engaged and on board with Sun Devil Athletics during this time? And what has been the response to your messaging in that regard? Absolutely. Uh, Scott Nelson, our director of our Sun Devil Club, Kate Janjewski, who uh, oversees our digital, Mark Brand, uh, who's our longtime friend and colleague, um, are, are a few of the people. Mike Mateen in the ticket office who oversees, you know, the co correspondence with Frontline, you know, with our fans. Um, I mean, they're, they're, Becky Park, who does um, uh, all of our corporate sponsorship connections and so forth. That, that team of five and then others, of course, who work around them and with them, including yourself, uh, of course, uh, have uh, been constantly thinking outside of the box about how you keep people connected. You know, what kind of competitions can coaches have in terms of, I think at one point, Matt Thurman and Bobby Early were engaged in some kind of free throw shooting, you know, virtual <laughs> contest or something or other. Or maybe it was Matt yeah. who thought he could challenge Bobby, right? Uh, but then, how, <laughs> then you get that stuff out, uh, you know, to your constituents. Uh, Mike Mateen has been unbelievable as far as thinking about, you know, if you had 50% capacity, 20% capacity, uh, it, you know, once it was determined that the season was postponed, you know, how do we not simply just take the loss of every single person going, okay, I want a refund, but hey, we want you to stay engaged and push forward till next year or you know, would you be willing to make a donation with some of your funds? Um, that collective group has done an incredible job. Scott has pulled together uh, groups up on groups of donors, and then our coaches have understood that you know you need to be ready at the drop of a dime to get on a Zoom with some donors or get on a, a Zoom with uh, you know some season ticket holders and give them some insight in terms of how you how we're doing things and what we're doing right now. Uh, to keep our student athletes ready for the eventuality that we do come back, uh, that we'll be ready to go. And so uh, it's been a tireless effort, Tim. And, and I mentioned some of the names, but, you know, Becky, I mean, we, we probably had four or five uh, uh, corporate uh, engagements, you know, where and, and, and those individuals who have uh, become partners of ours, they, they deserve the right to have inside information on how we're managing and what we're doing and Ray and myself and Herm and and, and Bobby and, and and many others, um, you know Sheila McInerney down the line have uh, given up their time, information and insight as, as to what it is that we're doing. And I, I think people, uh, when they come away from those conversations, uh, leave them being proud uh, that that we're doing things the right way. And you know, some people would say people take shots at the conference for being conservative and all those kind of things, but uh, we're seeing across the country right now, what happens when you go for it and you know you don't have daily testing and things like that, which our doctor said, without that, we're not comfortable. We're seeing, we're seeing the after effects of that. And uh, you mm -hmm. know, we're not going to keep our fingers crossed that as we move forward, uh, we're in a much better place. Now, in addition to your duties as deputy AD, you also have a major hands-on role with Sun Devil football. And give us a sense, Gene, what these next few weeks will be like inside the walls of the Arizona State football complex as you get ready to start a season in early November. And I know you, you're part of a, a Pac-12 committee that is currently handling uh, the issue of getting a schedule uh, ready to go for uh, the start of conference play in early November. Yeah, um, we've been heavily involved. We, meaning the individuals who are part of that Pac-12 working group, I would say <laughs> all the way until we got to, you know, this actual launch of where we're headed, you know, with the, the, the seven game schedule and all. Um, but we, I think we did 28 different models of a Pac-12 schedule when we thought we'd play wow. 10, 10 games, you know, conference only mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, did a bunch of modeling, reviewed a bunch of things, talked about possibilities and probabilities. Uh, but then we've also talked about, uh, you know, how we're managing our student athletes uh, within that same time period. Um, you know, again, safety mechanisms, comparing notes. I, I think it's brought the conference a lot closer too. I mean, people that you're, you know, potentially at odds with, you know, we're, we're all one team as a conference or, or have been over the past uh, several months trying to figure out how to make it back. Um, and so, you know, head coaches in, in included in that. Uh, so that's been really refreshing and fulfilling work. 
in, in, in that regard. Um, and then relative to the overall um, piece of, of, of football in general, we're in a two week window right now where uh, it's starting to look a lot more like football. You know, you can have, uh, uh, you know, a, a certain amount of time period, I think up to 12 hours a week uh, where you can be on the field in uh, skill instruction, um, which means you can move around doing football related things instead of just running, you know, 50 yard dashes back and forth to get your wind up. You know, you can actually do some things and some instructional things with with your coach at, at positions and so forth uh, that, that start to look like football. And then, um, you know, once the schedule is announced, depending on, you know, if your start date is on the 6th or 7th of November, then you march backwards. And, you know, I, I think the 8th or the 7th of October will be when actual, you know, what would be considered camp, but it will be uh, preseason practice will start. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, pads and all those kind of things. You got a five day acclimatization period, but uh, you'll, you'll put the pads on and so forth. But one of the keys, Tim, is we've got to remain diligent, even though we're moving back towards it. I, I, I don't know if people would have saw this, but uh, Coach Kelly at Notre Dame talked about, you know, the, the outbreak that they had and that they had kind of slipped back into some old uh, familiar practices around the game and mm-hmm. kind of speculating that that's probably where uh, some of the uh, disease infection, you know, or, or transmission happen. And so, you know, we've got to remain diligent in the protocols that have been outlined with the advice that we've received. And despite the fact that we're moving back into competitive mode, there still have to be um, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, precautions taken in accordance with what we know works versus kind mm-hmm. of going back into things as usual. So that's another thing you're, you're kind of balancing ramping up, but staying the course sure. in terms of safety and and uh, distancing and wearing your mask and all that stuff. Just because you're going to play football doesn't mean you don't need a mask on uh, in terms of what the best practices are, although the daily testing will help with some of that. Before we let you go, I have to say what a proud pop you're going to be this fall. Your son, a freshman walk-on defensive back for the Sun Devils this year out of Corona del Sol. How exciting <laughs> is that for you? Oh, a little JB3 who's not so little anymore. He's looking at me, you know, eye to eye. He's 6'1", 190. Pretty much. Was, oh, yeah. And I told him, I said, hey, man, don't be looking at me in my eyes directly, man. You know, you still pay <laughs> deference to pop and you, you look around. But it's, it's, it's been wonderful, Tim. And kind of a blessing and a curse in some ways, too, though. You know, like if he shows up late to a meeting that I'm in, that's not good for him <laughs> or me, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so I've got a little bit more information than a lot of parents would about how he's doing and what he's doing. In <laughs> fact, we, we sat down and went through every class of his this past Sunday, and uh, he's got, I don't know, two A's, three B's, and a C or something, and we got to figure out how to make that C a B and some of those B's A's. So there's a little mm-hmm. pressure for both of there us, but it's, it, it's a, sh- a sure delight and, and an absolute blessing to have him in, in our midst for sure. JB3, now a Sun Devil defensive back, just like his pop. Again, Gene, kudos to you for all the great work you've done throughout your career at Arizona State, and especially the work you've done these past six months to help this athletic department navigate its way through an unparalleled crisis. Great to see you, partner. We'll talk soon. You too, buddy. Appreciate you, Tim. ASU Deputy Athletic Director Gene Boyd has been our guest on this segment of the Anderson Healy Show. Ray and I will continue with this week's conversation after these messages on the Sun Devil Radio Network. 